ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار بسر الإسلام إن شاء الله before I proceed this a brother and sister who is very sick إن شاء الله is asking for dua please remember in your dua إن شاء الله when you are praying Allah سبحانه وتعالى give her شفاء إن شاء الله as for today's khutbah, inshallah, it is to do with being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has, given, he has given us. And being heedful, or being, 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 being very careful not to be ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are many ni'mah and blessings Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us. Really, if we reflect... And most of this ni'mah is to do with our wealth and our health and the kids and children and, you know, education, everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us. So if you, being grateful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will extend this ni'mah. And if we are not ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this ni'mah can be removed, can be taken away by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said many occasions in the Quran, stated people Allah has bestowed and extended his ni'mah and blessings over them, but they threw it away and disowned. They didn't like they didn't be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were taken away from this ni'mah. Subhanallah. In Surah Al-Qalam, and we will be exploring this in the Quran, inshallah. Maybe we'll be going through three, maybe stories in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, and this is to take it. And this is to learn from it. And the ni'mah doesn't mean that it should have a lot of wealth. No, anything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you is wealth and health. So, preserve it and protect it and be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you want to know that, then look down those who are and not in that state. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Qalam, there was a man who was wealthy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him wealth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives wealth whatever he wants. And this is nothing except a test. Test for you, either you will be grateful or ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing more than that. So Allah has given him test, Allah has given him wealth and Allah has tested him. But he was a pious, a righteous man who knew the position of wealth, where to put it, and how to use it. And very rare, a minority of humanity, and especially in Islam, know about this. Because the wealth is test. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained that in the Quran. This man was a wealthy, he had a garden. A wonderful, beautiful land that has vegetables and fruits and all kind of things. Huge land. So whenever he have harvested, half of that wealth you will be going to the masakin. You will be going to the masakin, to the poor people. This was a culture and a tradition and a norm for him every year. Every year, whenever he harvests, the masakin will bring their containers and they will get their share. And they will go away. And the rest is for his family. Mashallah. So he continued that and he became old and he became sick. And he said to his children, he had three children, and he said to his children, continue the charity. Because the charity protects the wealth. It protects your health. It protects the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It protects the loss of the wealth. All this it protects. So he says, keep this charity. My sons, don't change anything. But as we know, humans, they were greedy. They wouldn't. They said, yes, by the time he died, they changed everything. And they assumed that their father was giving a lot. And this is what happens to us. They're giving a lot to the poor people. They said, we have to save these. We have to invest here and there, you know. And then we have to produce these. And we'll go up. And then in two, five years, we'll be rich and rich. And we'll continue rich. And that is, that, that's how people do today, isn't it? But they were not thinking about the, 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 the poor people. So, so, when the time has came for harvesting the, the, the land, they sit and discuss 
And they said, we will go early in the morning before the poor, the poor people come before them. And we will harvest and let them come. There is nobody there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, they woke up early in the morning. Three of them with their others who are helping them. And they went there and said, be careful of the masakin. Let them not see you in the dark of the night. They're sneaking. But oh, can they sneak? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching over them and he knows their plan even before they plan. He knows the plan before they plan. And they put that plan into. So, when, we, when, we, when they went there, there the place their, their land was, there's nothing. So they said, where's, where's the land? As if they don't really know. And they said, inna Allah ba'alun, this may be your lady straight. We, we got wrong address. We got a wrong address. Because Fire came and ate everything up in the night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that. All the land was destroyed into burn to ash. All the land has been cultivated for years and years and years. A lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of intellect. In a, a few hours, they are burned down. Why? Because they, was, you know, they haven't given the, the poor people their, their rights. And I'm coming to these brothers, inshallah. A beautiful thing is this happened to us. We are, alhamdulillah, Allah has given us. Some of us are rich. Some of us are in the middle. Those who are rich, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given, given them. Are we given? No, I'm, talking, I'm not talking about the poor. Are we given our family, our close brothers and sisters the rights? It happens that a man calls me, asks me a question. Sheikh, can I give zakat al fitri to my sister? Sheikh, can I give zakat to my sister? How on earth, how on earth, brother and sister, brothers, can you give zakat to your brother and sister? Who is in need, in a state and in a level of taking zakat? And what is zakat? How on earth can, how on earth can that happen? You ask about your brother and sister, sister I can, can I give you zakat in fitri? Just five pounds? And maybe you have millions in account? This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. It is... It is, wallahi, I don't really know what to say. I was shocked to hear that. I said, is she your, 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 your sister? Yes. So we don't really, that is why we're saying today, even we're not giving our, our, these brothers and sisters, our own brothers and sisters, the scholars say, if they are poor and you are rich, it becomes obligatory. Like your father giving them, like your, like your brothers, like, like, like your, 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 your sons and your daughters and your wife. How on earth is it going to be okay for you to have all that wealth and live in that palaces and drive that cars. And your brothers and sisters are not looking for food. Aib. Shame. Wallahi, it's shame. I don't really know what to say. And how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how are you going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment? Are we, are we saying that the only family we have today is our wife and kids? And we throw out everything else? Everyone else from our, our views? Is that what you're saying? Is this, the, is this the community we are looking for today? And we say that is brotherhood? Wallahi is shame. It is something which shooks the mind really. Wallahi I don't really know what to say. Brothers, your own brother and sister are suffering. Starving. And we are, alhamdulillah, at the same time, you're asking, can you give him? Some of them give, not even give the zakat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destroyed the farm. Because of they refuse to give that rice to the poor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. فَطَافَ عَلَيْهَا طَائِفٌ مِنْ رَبِّكَ وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ فَأَصْبَحَتْ كَصَرِيمٍ فَتَنَادُوا مُصْبِحِينَ أَنِغْدُوا عَلَى حَرْثِكُمْ مِنْ كُنْتُمْ سَارِمِينَ فَانْتَلَقُوا وَهُمْ يَتَخَافَتُونَ They went, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they were hiding, you know, saying the poor people should not look at you. Should not see you. أَنْ لَا يَدْخُلَ shouldn't be allowed to enter into the land. But there's no land. But there's no fruits. Everything is demolished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is teaching us, brothers, I am saying not only that you have to be very rich, the wealth you have should be shared. If you need good life in this dunya, especially in the heart. The non-Muslims today, they have done a statistics and studies and they find out the more you give, I'm not talking Islam, the more you give, the more you're happy you are. The happiness you're looking from the dollars and the pounds is not in there. The happiness you're looking is in the poor people. The more you give, the more happy you are. 
Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us. This money you are keeping for a, a, a man. A sheikh says, I was coming. A man who was very, very rich died. He passed away. Very rich to the limit. And this man hasn't done something good in the dunya. Subhanallah. He hasn't built, you know, you know, he was just saving, 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 and he died. He said, we went to his kids, those who are inherited millions. Each one, they have inherited 50 million or maybe 20 million. Very rich. And he said, just build a house. Just build a charity, a masjid for your father who has left all this. You know what they said? He could have built for himself when he was alive. He could have built this for himself. This is now ours. That's what you're building. If you don't build your house for yourself when you're alive, when you are alive, then it will never happen. The second story Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions also in the Quran. Also the same people is a two men who are friends. في سورة الكاف أضرب لهم مثلا رجلين جعلنا لأحدهما جنتين. A man who was very rich and a man who was poor. They were friends. Can be friends. This man Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him land. Fruits, grapes, all kind. And rivers running. Very rich. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even said rich. And the fruits and the, the, the trees have bought everything. He never lost anything. And he came to boast for his friend. He said, I'm richer than you. I'm better than you. I have these houses. I have this and this. But the poor man who was a piety, he advised him. He says, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not say this is what I've done for myself. Today, some of us, we attribute this to ourselves. I've worked hard. I have a degree, I've earned this, I've worked for 20 years, I've stressed, I've struggled, I've this and this. We forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did Qarun say when the people ask him, Wait, how did you get? Qarun, most richest, he said, I did this, this, this with my intellect. I did this with my intellect. So people will tell you, I've worked for this and I've done this and I've done this. That's what he said. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same thing happened to him. All his land were destroyed again. He haven't never done anything. And he said, why did I do this? What, what did happen? This is another story in the Quran. In Surah Al-Saba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, same thing. Saba is in Yemen. In a beautiful, beautiful land. Even Yemen, even beautiful today, has been destroyed. Allah used to have lands. There's uh, people who used to live in Saba. They had land, fruits. Some of the time, you know, they will go through the, the de- you know, the, the in, in, inside the land and you will grab all, the th- all kind of fruits and vegetables and all kind of fruits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to them. But they, they were unre- ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then they were ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent floods to the land and all the land were destroyed again. They rewarded that because of they disbelief Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it said Allah we have we have Broken down into history, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. There are many other stories Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the situation of this. So we have to be very, very careful. If you're a businessman, don't just think about your business. Think about those whom you share. Put some portion into your brothers and even to your cousins. Allah will make barakah on it, wallahi al-adim, before even akhirah. A man, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, used to have a land. He used to give half of his provisions to the poor every year. So a man was traveling in the desert near the land of that man. He said he had a sound from the heaven saying, Asqi hadiqati fulan. Give rain to the land of that man. He even mentioned his name. These are angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, take the water to the land of that man. He said, I went to the land man and asked him, what is your name? And he said, the same name. This is barakah. Don't think, let us not think ourselves only. Whatever we have is for ourselves and our kids. Wallahi al-adim. If you are thinking that way, then you're in a wrong position. Make sure that you give a portion to the Muslims, to the Rahim, to the close ones, all this. So that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will extend these to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه انه الغفور الرحيم والبر الكريم الحمد لله رب العالمين بنا استعين على الدنيا والدين صلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه الله سبحانه وتعالى also stated the story of قارون one of the most richest person in history humanity قارون very rich الله سبحانه وتعالى even says he's the keys of his toes all his toes the way he put his gold and money they were very heavy they need heavy people strong men to carry his keys not his his keys those who are, you know, the keys he has for the stores that are saved in the gold and silver. And many, you know, strong men and horses have to carry. That's how rich he was. Subhanallah. فَبَغَى عَلَيْهِمْ وَآتَيْنَهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ مَا إِنَّ مَفَاتِحَهُ لَا تَنُوبِ الْعُسْبَةِ إِلُوا الْقُوَةِ إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ قَوْمُ لَا تَفْرَحُ The people to him, they say, do not be happy because of this. إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُبْحُبِّ الْفَرِحِينَ وَبَتَغِي فِي مَا أَتَاكَ اللَّهُ Use this money for akhirah. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَسِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ Be good to the people the way Allah is good to you. وَلَا تَبْغِي الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُفْسِدِينَ And do not bring corruption to the earth. Allah doesn't like corruption. What did he say? قَالَ إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيْتُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمِ السَّيْدِ I have done with this with my knowledge. Allah hasn't helped me. I worked for it. Day and night, 24-7, 18 hours, 16 hours. You think it is easy? You think I did all this? Astaghfirullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we caused the earth to swallow all his property and himself. All his property, his palaces, his houses, they go down. They're still going down even today. Look. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. In the context of Fir'aun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said on Fir'aun. Inna Fir'aun ala fil ardi wa ja'ala ahla shi'a yastad'ifu ta'ifatan minhum yudabdihu abnahum wa yastahiyin nisawa minna ka inna wa kana min al-mufsidin. Pharaoh was arrogant and raised from the earth, killing some of them, sparing others, slaving others. Then Israel has reached the status of to say that I am Allah. That's Pharaoh. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded Banu Israel to leave Egypt in the night, in the night Allah told Banu Israel to leave. And Pharaoh had in the morning, he followed, followed them up. And Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, Banu Israel, they were going, running from Fir'aun. And Fir'aun was following them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically mentioned the state, how strong Fir'aun was. Arrogant, tyranny, all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Come to Rakum in Jannah. So when he went to the sea, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed him to uh, open the sea and they went through the sea with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Fir'aun followed them and he was destroyed. All his army. When Fir'aun was following Musa, he never thought he, will, he never thought that he would never come back. But that strong on, on all, all wealth, he never even won in a million. He never thought that he would never come back. But just was like that. Everything has changed from up to down. The water was going underneath. It came over him. And he sees the reality now. And he says, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. I know the reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, It is not time to take shahada now. It's very late. The time is off. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the Banu Israel to inherit what he left. Allah says, Kam tarakum in jannatin. وعيون وزروع ومقام كريم ونعمة كانوا فيها فاكهين كذلك أورثناها قوما آخرين فما بكت عليه مسلم how many beautiful land palaces houses lands they have left and died left وزروع ومقام كريم ونعمة كانوا فيها فاكهين and blessings they were enjoying and we have inherited to others سعد بن مقاس رضوان الله عليه one of the great Sahab of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when the Muslims conquered Persia, Iraq, and they came to Persia, and they came to conquer the, they came to the palace of the king of Persia, who ran away. 
And they saw something they haven't seen in their life. Swimming pool and carpets. They were very sophisticated. Persians were very, they were 2,000 year old kingdom that time. When they came into the palace, they were shocked to see. And Sa'ad bin Waqas read this ayah. Kam taraku min jannatin. وعيونين. How many palaces, how many houses, how many beautiful clothes have they left Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have inherited and give it to those. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَا بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ The heavens and the earth did not tear for them. The scholar says, when the believer dies, the heavens and the earth will tear for him. For what he was doing in this dunya. For the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The prayer, the place you used to pray, will, will shed tears for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَا بَكَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّمَاءُ وَالْأَرْضِ The heavens and the earth, they never cried for them. They even never know about them. They never cared about them. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. How many? Just 10 years ago, some of the Muslim leaders were living in Jannah, in wealth. Allah has given them extended for that test. Some of them were ruling 20 years, 30 years, oppressing Muslims. Not even allow them to go to the masjid. Not even allow the sisters to have the hijab. They were in kings and they, they have all in under their control. In a day overnight, everything flips. What's going on? 30 years in power. All sophisticated soldiers, all weapons and all you know, intelligence in there. In a day overnight, everything comes up and down from light to dark. He runs away. He, only his family with a jet. And he, can't, he could not find a place to accept him. He couldn't find a place to accept him. Go over the world. Sorry, you can't land in here. Sorry, you can't land in here. Sorry, you can't land in here. Sorry, you can't land here. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. They never benefit of their wealth, their purpose, their status. Their, they never benefit indeed their purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. In the blink of an eye, everything changed. Everything changed. There are many stories to be, tell, to be told, brothers, and you are aware of all that. That is all a test. Allah gives you time. Allah gives you wealth. Allah gives you security. Not because he loves you and he hates the other one. In, in, you are in a test all in the dunya here. You are doing your test. If you are good, Allah will text, extend you. If you are not, then the time will come. The time will come, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same thing. With regards to those brothers in Islam, inshallah, alhamdulillah, whoever Allah has given him wealth, or health, or family, and Allah has extended a lot to us. And for some reason, sometimes Allah doesn't give that extension because of his hikmah. Because of his wisdom, he must not extend to you. And he has extended to someone because of another hikmah. Then if Allah has given you that opportunity, use it the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. For the time of the dunya is limited. It's limited. Be let the wealth don't enslave you. Be the seed of the wealth. Be the master of the wealth. Let the wealth does not become a master on you. And, and, and use you. Not for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Use it as the Sahaba Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to do it. They used to give whatever they want. However they want. The amount they want. What they need to keep. And if they want to give it all they can. That have that capacity. Of Iman. Be like that. Be someone who can control his wealth. Not the wealth can control over him. If that is the case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that people. In Islam, you can be rich, alhamdulillah, there's no problem with that. But control your wealth, that will your wealth be in your hand, in your pocket, not in your heart. So that you even don't give the most closest, even some people, they don't even give to your, their wives and kids today. They don't even give to their wives and kids today, subhanallah al Where is this wealth going? You are going, you are going, where is it going? Who are you delaying for it? Who are you keeping for it? But the one who takes care for is the one who gives to his family, his uh, 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 kinship, and to the brothers and Muslims, all of them. You will have happiness in this dunya as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi Extend, you will get the extent of, of umr age. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be happy with you. I will say this, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam said, inna Allah wa malaikta wa sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alaihi wa sallamu taslima. 
اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات انك غني مجيب الدعوات يا رب العالمين ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار واقم السلام